Hey guys, welcome to my channel. So today I am going to be sharing my experience with you about my 5 days stay at Selection Center South or the SSB Bangalore. Alright, so I think you guys might be knowing that SSB Bangalore consists of 3 boards. Number 12 SSB, number 17 SSB and number 24 SSB. So number 12 SSB belongs to the Indian Navy whereas number 17 SSB and 24 SSB belong to the Indian Army. So in December 2020, the Indian Navy had released a notification for many short service commission courses in the Indian Navy that is generally conducted through an exam called the INET or INET. But this time, because of the pandemic, there was no physical exam conducted and the shortlisting was, had taken place based on our engineering marks or degree marks. By the end of January 2020, the cutoffs had released and uh, this time it was actually pretty high. On an average, uh, cutoff was around 79 to 80% for any course. So with my engineering marks, I was able to qualify for the general service course. In fact, my first preference was f uh, flying branch or the aviation branch, but I had missed the cutoff just by 2%. So hence I got shortlisted for the general service branch. So the tentative date of commencement of the courses released in the notification were June 2021. So by mid-Feb I had received my call letter uh, telling me to report at SSB Bangalore on 2nd March 2021 at 6.30am. So on 2nd March 2021, I had reported at the SSB Bangalore at around 5.45 in the morning. There were already 40 to 45 candidates waiting in line. So by 6.30, the staff started letting us inside the premises. There were totally 68 of us that had reported on that day. At the gate, they checked our COVID certificates and if not COVID certificate, they were even ac accepting the asymptomatic certificates signed by a doctor. Right when we entered the gates, we were made to pass through a sanitization tunnel and after that we had to fill in a register with all the travel details, where you're coming from and etc. We were then made to keep our luggage in a separate counter. After that, we were told to stand in line for the documentation and of course our Aadhaar card was checked, then our 10th standard mark sheets and all the other required documents that were mentioned in the call letter. So after that, we were sent into a small hall right next to the baggage counter and inside the hall, we were told to fill up many forms. It's mostly identification forms and then we had to submit a Xerox of all our documents including our engineering mark sheets, 10th, 12th, Aadhaar, etc. Right after that we were made to assemble in line outside the hall and the distribution of chest numbers took place. So as they called out our uh, registration number, we had to come forward, tell our date of birth and then we were handed over the chest number. Of course, before that we were distributed into three groups, that is the freshers, repeaters and the screen outs. Freshers are those who have never attended a SSB before in their life. Screen out ones are the ones that have attended but have not uh, gone to the stage two of the testing and uh, repeaters, the category which I was in, uh, we were the ones who had experienced the five days of SSB before. Alright, so once all the formalities were completed, we were taken into the main hall for testing. So that's a separate building. So the hall we were taken to was Sandeep Unikrishnan Hall. 
So the first thing that happened was the OIR or the Officer Intelligence Rating Test. It's basically an IQ test and there are uh, two types, the verbal test and the non-verbal test. So yeah, we were given 40 questions in each and 17 minutes, which is pretty less uh, in each of the papers. So basically 34 minutes for 80 questions. And another th another thing that was introduced maybe like recently because I have not heard of this before is the OMR sheet. Before all we had to do was tick the right option or write the option number in a piece of paper. Whereas this time we were given an OMR sheet. So every time you solve a question, you're supposed to shade the correct option, which is pretty time consuming. So of course, I don't, not, not even a single person was able to complete the paper. So on an average out of the 40 questions in each, everyone was able to maximum answer 29 or 30, 31, that's it. Nobody was able to cross that. So yeah, that was the stage one. After that, we were taken for breakfast. Uh, yeah, the breakfast as usual was oh, really good. And of course, because of the entire crowd, it was not just our board. It was even one or two other boards that were present over there. So yeah, we had to wait a lot of time to get our food. So right after the breakfast got over, we were again made to go back into the Major Sandeep Krishnan Hall. And now it was time for the PPDT test, which is the Picture, Perception and Discussion Test. So what happens in this test is they flash an image in front of you, which is available for 30 seconds. So you are made to observe whatever you can see in the image. And after that, the image is taken away. Uh, we have another 30 seconds to note down our observations about the characters, the mood of the character, the age of the characters, etc. Et and in the next four minutes, we are made to write a story. So whatever we could see in the picture, we are supposed to form a story about that picture, like what could have led to that situation, what is going on in that and what could be the outcome of the situation. So once our story writing was complete, our answer papers or the sheet in which we wrote the story was taken away and we were made to go down and assemble in a group. Uh, they desegregated us into four groups. So the 68 of us were made into four different groups, uh, 17 people each. And now we were going for the discussion part of the test. So we entered a room in which there were three assessors sitting, uh, one GTO, one psychologist and another interviewing officer. So of course we are made to sit in our chest number order and one by one we are given one minute each to narrate the stories that we had written down in the piece of paper. So we were not given back the piece of paper to refer to. So yeah, you had to just remember what you had written. So yeah, so 17 of us, so that's 17 minutes, uh, each of us had to narrate our individual stories. And right after the last person finishes his narration, the group discussion starts. So the objective of this group discussion is basically to come up with a common story. So all the 17 of us, we try to put in our points, what we could perceive from the picture and uh, try to come up with a common story. So because I'm in a repeaters group, this usually never happens. So because of the everybody wants to show the assessors that they're taking part in the discussion, right? So everybody just ends up shouting at each other. So that's known as the fish market scenario. So that's very common for a repeaters batch. Uh, yeah, so our individual narrations were very good. Even the assessors appreciated us after the uh, narration took place. And uh, yeah, of course the discussion it took part for uh, almost two to three minutes and the assessors understood that nobody over here is coming up to a conclusion and everyone is just shouting. So he just uh, told us to stop and he told us to leave the room. So this is the entire stage one of testing that got completed at this point. So once once the test got over, we were taken back to the mess to have our lunch. So because it was a Tuesday, there was no non-veg food. Uh, yeah, so once all the candidates finished their lunch, we had another break for around 15 to 20 minutes. And after that, we were taken back to the Major Sandeep Krishnan Hall. 
and once we were in the hall an, an officer of from the board came up to uh, announce the results so out of the 68 of us that had reported on day one 21 of us had got screened in so yes i was also screened in and the people who were screened in were immediately made to submit their phones and uh, collect the new chest number so yeah once and of course they did not even give you time to even inform your family or anything the moment your number was called you just had to immediately give your phone switch it off and give it and immediately take your new chest number and come to a side so the moment the screening results were declared by the officer the 21 of us were told to go and get our luggage and keep it aside the remaining 47 out of the 68 who had uh, reported on day one ha were told to go back home so the 21 of us were then uh, told to sit separately and we were given something called the PIQ forms so which is the it stands for P uh, personal information questionnaire so this is basically a form that consists of everything you have done in your life like about you your family and everything right from your name your date of birth your father's name his date of birth, his income where he studied what did he study what have you studied what are your extracurricular activities whether you were in ncc what all positions of responsibility have you taken up then uh, your work experience your basically just everything so this form is of two pages it's back in front and the thing is we had to fill this form twice so one of these forms go to the interviewing officer and the uh, other goes to the psychologist. So once the PIQ forms were filled, of course we had to fill a few more small identification forms and the no risk certificate and yeah of course we are responsible if we catch coronavirus in, during the stay and i all the these forms were filled up this took almost an hour and uh, right after that we were sent to our accommodation our accommodation was really really good so the accommodation block uh, for male and females are separate and in the uh, male accommodation it was of three floors of course each floor belonged to one board so we were on the first floor that belonged to number 12 ssb so the rooms also were allocated based on chest number not randomly uh, so chest number one to chest number eight were uh, in room number one Chest numbers um, 9 to chest number 16 were in room number 2 and follows. So this time due to the pandemic we were not uh, given bed sheets and pillow covers etc. These were the things we had to get from our home. It was of, of, of course mentioned to us in the call letter so it was not a problem. Everyone had got their own item. Along with the bed each candidate is even given a small cupboard and a, like there's even a dressing table for everyone to use. The toilets and washrooms are of uh, sharing basis, so it's like a, around a big bathroom that has to be shared by all the candidates. So right after this, we were yeah we were given almost one hour to one and a half hours to just freshen up and uh, take some rest. So after that, we were called down for the group photo. So the group photo yeah it was just taken right next to the uh, male accommodation itself and uh, yeah the group photo costed each candidate 65 rupees for the hard copy obviously yeah so apart from this i think the entire day was more or less free uh, we did not it was almost three o'clock by then and uh, we didn't have much uh, things to do on this particular day so all the candidates uh, yeah because of the pandemic of course uh, we were restricted from leaving the ssb premises or else on any other a regular SSB, we, the candidates are allowed to leave the campus and return by almost 7 p.m. So we were not allowed to do that. We had to stay within the SSB campus itself. And of course, we were not allowed to even play sports like volleyball, basketball because of the pandemic again. So yeah, so what everyone did, we were just making friends, introducing ourselves to each other. And yeah, that's more or less. Of course, there was carom and chess. These are the only two 
the um, entertainment things uh yeah so many people were of course studying for the next day and oh uh, uh, yeah also our schedule was informed to us by uh, by a staff of the ssb he told us what time we should do what and the general instructions about how to on uh, the conduct of ourselves how we should behave in the next four days what all we must do and just the basic information was provided to us so yeah that's it for the day day one all right so beginning with day 2 of ssb so this was on 3rd march 2021 so the day 2 of the ssb is also called the psychology day so on this day a series of psychological tests are conducted on the candidates so we were made to get up by 6:30 approximately and uh, after that we had a light breakfast so by 7:30 we had to report at colonel jojen thomas hall which is again in the main testing block of ssb bangalore So then the psychologist walked into the room and he gave us the instructions. So basically in the psychological test there are mainly four tests. One is the TAT or the thematic acceptance test, the WAT, the word association test, the SRT, the situation reaction test and the SDT, the self description test. So the first test was the TAT the th uh, thematic acceptance test in this it's similar to PPTT in which a photo is displayed and you had to write a story on it but only thing in this is that we did not we do not have to uh, describe the characters the number of characters the mood and the age so yeah same as the first thing there are th uh, there are totally 12 pictures that are going to be displayed and each picture will be displayed for a time of 30 seconds After thirty seconds, you have four minutes to write down your story in the answer booklet. So, one thing you need to know is that in these twelve pictures, eleven of these are actual pictures, and unlike PPDT, in PPDT the pictures are more or less blur. So you have you can imagine more of what's happening. It's not clear to you. So you can whatever comes to your mind, you can write it down. Whereas in uh, TAT, the pictures are pretty clear. So you know what's happening. so there is not so much imagination like the first test anyway so over here the 11 pictures are real pictures and actual uh, sketches i can say not pictures and the final one the 12th picture is a blank picture so they just display a blank screen so you are free to imagine whatever you want and you can write your own story within the next 4 minutes so this is the first test in psychology The next test is WAT or the word association test. So it's pretty simple test in which they display a word and whatever comes first to your mind when you see that word you note it down like it, basically a sentence. So as soon as you see a send a word you write a sentence based on that. So the thing that the is here is the time pressure. You just have 15 seconds per word. So within 15 seconds you're supposed to look at the word, observe it, think of a sentence and write it down. All these things in just 15 seconds. and if you are too slow the next word it just keeps coming so you have to be quick in it so totally there are 60 words given 60 and each uh, has 15 seconds so within 15 minutes this test is also concluded so the next test is the srt which is another pretty simple test in which they give you a situation and you have to write down what you would do in that situation and it's not very complicated they just say that you are um, for example on the way home it started raining and you did not find any transport so what you will and dash so whatever you would do in that situation it, you just fill it down so yeah this is the uh, srt the situation reaction test and uh, the last test of psychology is the sdt is the self description test to see how much you know about yourself and apart from you of course your close ones so in this uh, 15 minutes time is given so all you have to do is you have to write four paragraphs so first paragraph is what your parents think about you the second paragraph is what your teachers think about you the third paragraph is what your friends think about you and the final paragraph is what you think about yourself and what you would like to become in the future 
so this is just it's a simple thing you just have to write down about yourself so again it's that you just have to be a little quick because 15 minutes is given and yeah over here you can't ask for extra time like in our college exams so, all right so right after the psychological testing was complete uh, the interviews had started off we were given some time to have our lunch and take a small rest and uh, based on our chest number they had called us for the interview so almost 10 candidates so that's chest number one to chest number 10 had the interview on the day one it's a uh, day two itself the remaining people had their uh, interviews on the consecutive days so as my chest number was three i was called pretty soon for the interview i was made to wait outside the interviewing officer's room and when one of the ssb staff came and told me to enter the room that's when i had to enter so yeah let the interview went on pretty well uh, i had there are a few questions that he had asked me of course so i had made uh, made a note of it in my book let me just read out a few questions to you yeah so basically the interview they revolve on they ask you questions based on three main things so one is about yourself so how much you know about yourself so they ask you a lot of questions on yourself secondly they ask you things up because this is a navy interview of course so they ask you questions about the indian navy then apart from that they ask you based on they want to see how, how much you know about what's going on in the world so your general knowledge or the current affairs and lastly they uh, the interviewing officer asked me technical questions so based on whatever you have studied or the field that which you are working in so yeah these are a few questions so about uh, these are questions about myself first so of course he asked me about yourself what is uh, your name and what does your name mean then uh, why do you want to join the indian navy then which place are you from then i'm from bangalore so he asked me about bangalore a lot about bangalore in fact the history of bangalore like starting 200 300 years ago so everything about bangalore who is the mayor of bangalore uh, and what are the specialties of bangalore and many things like that about bangalore then af after that about my family where does my dad work and my dad's also from the army so everything about my dad's army career uh yeah of course from that in the in my family being a 21 year old boy what what all responsibilities do i take up in the family then coming to my education about where all i have studied the marks have studied uh, like the marks have scored right from my 10th standard till my engineering then then why is there a drop in marks and uh, of course then apart from that in my education what all extracurricular activities i have taken part in basically whatever is written in your piq form is asked to you so yeah you should be knowing everything yeah about uh, extracurricular activities and uh, uh, leadership uh, positions and then yeah challenges you're faced in your education then your favorite teacher then all these things your best friend why is he your best friend okay apart from that he uh, yeah of course he asked me about my friends then he asked me about uh, which newspaper do i read and how much time do i spend reading it on on an average apart from that what all tv shows uh, or tv series do you watch and uh, online how yeah he asked me about how how do you use the internet so uh, on an average how often do you use the internet uh, like in a day so how long do you use the internet and how do you what do you do on the internet then he asked me about if you're not selected in this interview then what what is your next plan what are your future plans what is your backup plan apart from that my hobbies my interests what all sports you take part in like what all you have represented which level have you played up to then based on whatever sport you tell more questions on that so i play golf and i do horse riding so he asked me a lot of questions based on these two sports uh apart from that yeah he asked me about my psychology test how did it go and uh, what did i write in my blank story he told me to narrate my blank story to him my blank picture story all right so this was about myself uh, after this he moved on to navy questions so he asked me of course who is the chief of navy the different commands of the indian navy so these were like the general questions you can expect then he asked me yeah the inventory of the indian navy so basically how many submarines does it have how many frigates how many corvettes how many aircraft carriers then of course names of each then uh, different where is it stationed and few questions which of course you know like a uh, little too much in detail but it's yeah whether you know it or not is up to you so apart from that yeah the motto of the indian navy then uh, yeah then he asked me the difference between indian navy and indian coast guard then the ranking structure right from the sailor ranks till the naval chief so everything then the academy's location where do the sailors train then where where do officers train 
All right. So this of uh, of uh, one more question he asked me was that your uh, your dad is from the army. So why do you want to join the navy? Why not the army? So this was another question. So this was about the navy part of it. Then after this he asked me about the technical part. So coming to the technical part of the interview, uh, my interviewer had asked me questions based on my field, and uh, since I'm a mechanical engineering student, a majority of my questions were asked based on my field. Yeah. So the first question that was asked to me was the thermodynamic laws and uh, how how are they used in a daily life the next question he asked me was the working of a ship uh, how does a ship work and uh, how does a ship which is made up of metal float in water so that was another thing then he asked me the difference between a four stroke engine and a two stroke engine and also the difference between a petrol engine and a diesel engine then um, yeah working of an air conditioner and a uh, working of the refrigerator that we have in our houses after that he asked me the difference between evaporation and boiling so both the, in both the cases the liquid turns into vapor then how are they different so this was the question then uh, lastly he asked me how are rains caused like how are clouds formed and how is the rain caused although this is not mechanical this comes in the technical category and the last part of the inter interview was based on the current affairs so this was a direct question so the interviewer just asked me uh tell me one international news and one national news and also your opinion on it so that was the end of my interview so the interview uh, went about for almost an hour so 55 minutes to 1 hour was the duration of my interview and then the interviewer thanked me and also yeah because of covid so between you and the interviewer there's a glass screen that is kept so because of that at times it becomes little difficult to hear the interviewing officer's questions So yeah so probably that will just be there for uh, yeah this time period right after the pandemic is over that should be removed so yeah this was the experience of the personal interview which happened on day 2 for me so after this the entire day was free we uh, so we did not have anything else to do the entire day so we were all just hanging out in the canteen and interacting with the other uh, batches that had that were present in the army boards So when our navy board was going on uh, the in the army board there was a the female batch of jag entry judge advocate general so yeah that was going on the other board so of course we made a lot of friends and that's it we enjoyed the food and yeah every day at lunch there was non veg so that was really good and apart from that in the cafeteria there's a internet cafe so that uh, you can you can pay and use the facilities there you can use the internet and yeah you can have apart if you don't like the mess food you can have all other food there all uh, chicken noodles chicken fried rice gobi manchurian chole bhature everything is available at the cafeteria so yeah that's it for day 2 All right so moving on to day 3 of the SSB which is the GTO day so day 3 and day 4 of the SSB are known as GTO days so GTO stands for group test or group tasks and then yeah so as you would have seen in many videos the dress code for GTO is white and white so you wear a white shirt along with white shorts and of course white shoes white socks So yeah so the GTO consists of nine different tasks known as the nine different group tasks so on the two days they are distributed so the first day we did five tasks and on the second day we did the remaining four so the first task of uh, uh, day 3 of GTO was the group discussion So in the group discussion the GTO or the group testing officer he gives the topics and based on that uh, the group has to discuss. So our group oh yeah we were 21 screened in so the 21 were further divided in 3. So 7 in each group. So uh, just number 1 to 7, 8 to 14 and uh, 15 to 21. So these were the groups. So I was in the first group. <coughs> yeah so in the group discussion we were given uh, there are two group discussions. So the topics are generally based on things that are happening presently. So the topic for our group discussion was the first topic was uh, was tobacco addiction amongst youth. 
so this was the first topic so we had to discuss on this topic for about 10 to 15 minutes then the second group discussion the topic was why does india lack in research and development although we are producing more than enough engineers so this was the topic for the second group discussion all right so this was the first task of gto moving on to the next task was gpe also known as group planning exercise so what happens in this is that uh, a situation is given to us in which there is a model kept in front of us or a 2d or a 3d model and uh, we are assumed to be in yeah, the group of seven so the gto tells us exactly what we are doing in that so it's like we, example you are traveling in a car on the way your car uh, breaks down the nearest uh, mechanic is uh, five kilometers away then on the way you see another situation you see a man bleeding on the road the nearest hospital is eight kilometers away you don't have transport and uh, these are the resources available with you so the so you have to analyze the situation and uh, put down your solution accordingly on the paper how you would go about the given situation and reach your destination on time so this is the group planning exercise so after writing this down there's also a discussion where everyone uh, discusses with each other their own uh, individual views on how they would go up, approach the uh, situation and finally one person from the group has to represent the group and uh, give out the uh, group solution so this is the group planning exercise <clears throat> then third comes the pgt also known as the progressive group task so in the progressive group task it's basically your group that is the seven people there's a starting point and a finishing point and in between that various obstacles so you, your job is to reach the finishing point without there are certain rules and uh, you um, yeah, so you will be given few items for helping you for example they give you a plank uh, some rope and a bully bully is like a circular plank or a log of wood you can say so with these resources you are supposed to try to cross over to the finish finish line so this is the progressive group task you're supposed to work in a group and also they give you a load at which are supposed to carry from the starting to the ending without touching the ground so this is the main objective you're supposed to use the different structures that are given in front of you and get over to the finish line without touching the ground so yeah there are certain rules which the gto will explain yeah so this is the progressive group task then the fourth uh, test uh, G, uh, group testing uh, event is the snake race so the snake race is basically all the three groups uh, the just uh, groups that were divided among the 21 the three groups stand together and uh, you are given a long rope like structure which is basically in the form of a snake that's why it's called the snake race and there are various obstacles which are supposed to cross and get to the finish line so that they include it includes a lot of net climbing climbing over a 10 feet wall and different things which are supposed to work in a team and reach the finish line so this is the snake race and uh, the fifth uh, is the lecture it lecture it is basically it's like just a minute or something basically you are given a chit consisting of four topics so you are given approximately one minute or two minutes to prepare and uh, front of your group you're just supposed to give a speech or talk about the, uh, the given topic for th time of three minutes so this is the lecture it so these were the events that took place on day one of our gto so I think the G GTO started early in the morning and before all the GTO starts, we have a warm up session. So that's about 15 minutes to half an hour. So yeah, that's pretty much tiring. And uh, yeah, that gives you a good warm up right before the events. So our, all our tests got over approximately by 11, 30, 12 and the rest of, rest of the day we were totally free. We had nothing to do. So yeah, one more thing that I forgot to mention is that at the cafeteria, so if you want to contact your parents or if you want to talk to your friends who are outside the ssb 
so there is a telephone which you can use but every one minute you're supposed to put a one rupee coin inside which is of course not very practical so for, as a substitute to this the cafeteria owner he has like around 10 small nokia mobile phones the thousand rupee phones so he charges one rupee per, per minute so when when you take the phone he notes down the time you're taking it and yeah you can talk to whoever you want and the time you return the mobile phone he again notes on the time and the number of minutes you have taken the phone that's how much you need to pay and yeah 10, 10 mobile phones sounds like a big number but because of the number of candidates that are inside the SSB uh, that too these are by the way this is shared by all the three boards the cafeteria is not in the cafeteria and the mess they are not individual for each board so all the 12 ssb 17 ssb and the 24 ssb they all share the uh, mess candidates mess and the cafeteria so yeah the 10 phones and around maybe 85 to 90 candidates so yeah you sometimes you have to wait for a long time to get a chance to use the mobile phone yeah apart from this yeah that's it for day three and uh, yeah we had our dinner and then lights out by 10 30 pm all right so the next one is the day four of the ssb so the day four of the ssb is also the day two of gto so in what happens in day four is that basically the remaining four tasks out of the nine gto tasks are completed on this day so of course we had a light breakfast at around 6 a.m and a little warm-up and then we were ready to do our tasks so the first task was head gt half group task so as i told you earlier the pgt which is a progressive group task so head gt is the exact same thing but you do it in a smaller group so the pgt was in the entire group of seven performing it at all like everyone doing it at once whereas in head gt what happens is that your group is further divided so our seven people were further divided into groups of three and four so three people in the first one and there's four people in the next one so it's the same thing just the group size becomes smaller so this is the head gt the seventh obstacle uh, of the overall gto is the individual obstacles so this is a very like favorite one like almost all candidates love to do this so there are 10 different obstacles each obstacle has different value of points and you're given three minutes time within those three minutes you're supposed to go all over and complete all that uh, all the 10 and if you finish all the 10 then you can again start repeating and to earn more points so the easiest obstacle of course gives you just one point and the toughest obstacle gives you 10 points So yeah, you're supposed to try to get as many points as you can in the time of three minutes. So this is the individual obstacles. Then the next uh, t task is called the command task. So in this, it's similar to PGT and uh, FGT, but in this, you are no like the commander. <clears throat> what happens is that you can nominate any two members of your group as your subordinates or helpers, and you are expected to cross a, a comparatively easier obstacle than the other FGT and PGT. So in this, you don't j actually do it yourself. Of course, being a leader, you can also involve yourself in doing the tasks. But the main thing is they see how you give the order, how you instruct your subordinates to carry out the given task. So yeah, so you pick any two and you just tell them you pick this up, you place it over here, you put that there, then you test it whether it works. If it doesn't, you try another method. So this is how the command task progresses until you complete the task. And of course, before the command task, the GTO, he talks to you personally for about 30 to 40 seconds. He asks you very basic questions. So why do you want to join the Navy and things like that? <clears throat> That's it. So the last GTO task is called the FGT or the final group task, which is exactly same as the PGT. Yeah. So this is just one last time you're doing it. So also known as the final group task. So as I said, you are given a starting line and a finish line, a set of a few items, including a load which you're supposed to carry. And you are expected to uh, go from the start to the finish without touching the ground and with the help of the given structures.
So this concludes the GTO part of the SSB. So once this is done, you are again free for the entire day. You can enjoy the mess, lunch, and if not the cafeteria. And of course, you are free to go out. Basically, in the entire SSB, you can roam around freely, except you cannot go towards the officers' area, and neither can you enter the GTO grounds unless it's your GTO day. So yeah, you can be, there's a place you can relax at the, this is a library, you can sit and read books. So there's a lot of things you can do. You can read the newspaper, everything is provided there. So this is about day four, all right? All right, so now talking about the last day, the day five of the SSB. So day five is also known as the conference day. So in the last four days, you have completed your psychology, you have completed your personal interview and you have even uh, completed your GTO. So the only thing that remains now is the conference, which is the final place where they decide whether you have to get selected or not. So uh, of course the day starts early in the morning as usual. You take your bath, you freshen up everything. Right after that, uh, the there's a this is a JCO over there who comes, he shows you the entire conference room. He shows you how you should enter, how you must greet the president of the board. And he just tells you about the general etiquettes of the conference. So once you are ready, what happens is that they make you sit inside a hall and in the order of chest number, ascending order of chest number, they call you into the conference room one by one. So the conference is generally not so long as you might think. It's just a matter of maybe one minute or so. And at times it does extend for a little longer time. So what happens in the conference, like first they call chest number one and the moment they uh, finish with chest number one, um, chest number two is waiting right behind him. So once there's a buzzer sound is, you can, uh, is rung, you can hear it, then immediately the next candidate walks into the conference room. So as I was chest number three, the moment I um, heard the sound, I entered the conference room so I was, of course, I greeted the president of the board. He, uh, he's a Commodore rank officer, uh, naval officer. So once you finish that, they, it's just, they just ask you simple questions like, how was your stay? How did you, how would you rate your performance? And how many friends did you make in the board? Then any suggestions towards the board? Just very general questions. So which did not last more than 45 seconds. So that's it. Then he says, thank you. And then you move out and the next candidate comes in. So this took place till all the 21 candidates were done and if, after that we were given some light tea and snacks etc. So of course at this time everyone is very tensed about the results and everyone is discussing how each other's conference went and people are making assumptions that this guy might get selected, that guy might get selected. So this is a very common thing that happens in the SSB. So finally they call you back to the same hall in which you are waiting in the vice president of the board he comes and gives you a, a speech uh, yeah so and then after that he holds the results with him so his speech took around 15 minutes and after that he was going to call out the results he held a file with him so all of us were like waiting to know what's in the file so he just kept the file on the table and he told sorry gentlemen but none of you have been selected so So basically that means to say that in our batch nobody had got selected it was a washout batch so that means like not one not even a single person gets recommended so what happened on actually there were 75 people called on day one but 68 reported out of those 68 21 had got screened in so after four days of testing in those 21 zero had got selected So that's it, yeah. So obviously at that point, everybody was disappointed. People were having a lot of hopes, if not on themselves, at least on others. So after that, of course, as, as a farewell to us, they gave us one last nice lunch. So yeah, that was the time everyone was deciding like, okay, how do we go? What plans for the future and things like that. And people, of course, few were there who were blaming the board. No, they didn't do this. They didn't uh, this something that keeps happening. It's very usual. 
so yeah right after that uh, of course everyone said and as usual there's a person who takes everybody's number and makes a whatsapp group for the entire board so th- that these are things that have happened in every ssb so finally yeah uh, that that's the end uh, we had to go back and uh, get all our luggage once all our luggage was kept in one place so that's it the uh, the jco who looked after us for the, so many days he came and told us don't worry this is not the last time you can always attempt this uh, more uh, more number of times in future so that's it then right after that we took our luggage and yeah we were made to leave so that's it then we left the board and yeah that's the end of it all right thank you guys if you have any questions about any procedure what happened in the ssb or anything specific you can always put it down in the comments and uh, anything else yeah i'll share my mail id also you can ask me there too Apart from that I hope you like this video any suggestions to me if I could improve the videos or anything that else I could have added on or you can feel free to tell me I'll definitely appreciate it and yeah that's it guys please uh, like the video share it subscribe and yeah share it to those who might who it might be useful to thank you so much